Um, I only re remembered that I was giving this presentation yesterday afternoon, so I've patched together um, a couple of pieces from some um, recent presentations I've done. I'm going to whiz through the first half, which is really scene setting, and then we're going to land up on a couple of slides at the end, which really does raise the issue around the governance of controlled vocabularies. So, um, first to sort of do some of the scene setting, the we've got a goal here of um, you know may, maybe this is slightly not not exactly in the in the vocabulary governance space, but 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 nevertheless we've been. It, it really says, you know, why we're thinking about vocabularies, why we're thinking about vocabularies in a in a in a web setting, and it's really thinking about what's a, you know, there's a there's a, a big push at the moment with research data to make sure that it is made available in a fair way that's findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, and so a group of us have been working on um, thinking about what that means for vocabularies. And um, I think I already presented a bit of this, I can't remember whether it was to this audience, Rowan, but I've, um, you know, some of you all recognize some of the slides in this, but I'm just, uh, as I say, doing some zine setting. But a fair vocabulary um, is one that's registered, therefore findable, um, that's on the web, um, therefore downloadable, accessible. Um, um, the interoperability comes from fact that it's uh, at least the thing that we're focusing on is that it's encoded using web standards and um, perhaps some domain specific extensions uh, I also realize I've missed a piece there it also interoperability goes to um, content issues that it matches the expectations of the discipline or domain and from uh, that also comes up in the reusability context that in order for a vocabulary to be reusable, it should be uh, made available with a, an open license um, that it's uh, maintained and therefore we can trust it and is comprehensible, makes sense to uh, the people who are familiar with the subject material. Um, We've got a lot of controlled vocabularies and mostly they're not fair. For example, they're published in a book. Um, this is a book that has a lot of controlled vocabularies which are widely used in the Australian um, environmental um, and ecology space. Um, and this is how the vocabularies look like this. They're, they're tables with red symbols or let, um, uh, codes there. Um, and um, here's another very important um, controlled vocabulary maintained, published by the um, International Commission on Stratigraphy. That's the geological time scale. And this is the version that most people see, which is a PDF. Um, the same information, in fact, a lot more is also available in a table on a web page at stratigraphy.org. But, um, you know, that's a very special table that's basically just in HTML. Um, so it's not really machine processable except in the sense of um, rendering it um, uh, by a browser. Um, and this um, a sin is also uh, committed by, um, you know, one of the most important controlled vocabularies, uh, which is the um, the SI units, which again are just this is the uh, a, a snip from the so-called SI brochure, which is where uh, the the official definitions of the the core um, units of measurement um, is just in a table on a web page. So we've been doing some work on, you know, what a fair vocabulary would look like, which I've already said, but how do we get there? Um, and that there's, you know, there's plenty of examples of fair vocabularies, which are not necessarily the ones which are um, published by the actual custodians of those vocabularies. In many cases, these are ones which have been translated from those, but nevertheless, it shows how it can be done. This one actually was um, uh, this is the original version from the EUDM uh, energy usage data model, which was a project that we did in CSIRO three or four years ago. Um, the, of course, Research Vocabularies Australia um, publishes um, quite a, uh, you know, hundreds of vocabularies in, in a fair way. Um, 
uh, although in many, uh, this one's one, which is, this is the official AODN um, vocabulary for sampling parameters, but there's a lot of vocabularies in um, Research Vocabularies Australia, which are just uh, uh, translated or transferred from um, non-fair um, representations. And there's, you know, there's a bit of a question of which is the authoritative version. Is it the non-fair one or is it the fair one? Um, this is an um, agricultural vocabulary published uh, on a platform called Scosmos. Um, so partly I'm just showing these as the different platforms, which, but which are all um, showing vocabularies published, published uh, um, in a, in a web-friendly way, which means at least they're going some way towards being fair. Um, Bioportal has been doing it for years. Ontobe shows the ones from the Oboe Foundry, um, and we've um, uh, we've written a paper basically um, giving some uh, basic instructions for how to take a um, leg what we call a legacy vocabulary. That's a controlled vocabulary which is um, published, for example, in a book or in a um, uh, um, comma separated variable spreadsheet or um, is, is maybe downloadable but not um, in a way which allows you to um, address each term in a vocabulary with its own web identifier and so we've um, written this paper this is with some colleagues scattered around the world um, on giving a kind of step-by-step -step as to how you might convert a vocabulary from um, a legacy format to make it fair. Um, we, in fact, on Sunday, I just um, submitted a revision of the manuscript back to PLOS Bio and Informatics because we received one set of reviews. So um, we hope that'll get accepted and, and, uh, and published soon. Um, so, whoops, and now, my computer is telling me that I have to do some exercises. So I should have killed that off before we started this talk, shouldn't I? I think I've got control again. Yes, good. Okay. Um, and um, we've got a couple of examples of where we can actually show how we've stepped through that recipe, if you like, to convert, in this case, the yellow book vocabularies into um, the um, linked data registry format. Um, so this is not just uh, an idle boast or a, um, a, a theoretical idea about how to do the conversion. Um, and um, uh, I, I've presented before, shown how you know the, the specific parts of the set of instructions are represented by, or, sorry, implemented by information in this fair publication of the control vocabulary. Um, similarly, for the geological time scale, you can um, represent it in a rather simple way, just to discuss concepts, and you can also then uh, um, add in extra information um, if you have a domain-specific vocabulary, which uh, ontology, which we actually have developed there through the GSIML project. Um, I'm not going to show that. Um, at the moment, because it's not the point of what we're talking about here. But um, the, the point is that there's a whole set of questions around the publication and development of controlled vocabularies, making them available to the research community. And the paper that we've written really deals with a, a part of uh, um, a number of different workflows. Um, and we're planning for it, and it's the converting paper, we're planning for it to be one of a set of guidelines. Um, and um, next cabs off the rank are actually going to be addressing some issues around maintenance and governance. In the first place, we've got the question of the creation of a controlled vocabulary, um, which is sort of the first step in the, um, in, the, in the governance process. And then there's the maintenance or update or keeping things up to date part, which is the sort of ongoing governance question. So having set the scene with that, now I'm going to pause on a couple of um, slides where I'm actually going to step through a whole series of, of precedents for how some controlled vocabularies, which are important ones, which are used in the community or should be known and used, um, how the governance of those is actually managed, which is the point of the presentation today burnt up the first 10 minutes, giving you some, uh, um, some context. 
So here's um, a list of a set of, um, let's think of them as, uh, as controlled vocabularies. Almost all of them are very recognizable that way. Maybe you hadn't thought of schema.org that way, but it is. Um, schema.org, of course, is the set of tags which are used to, um, uh, to tag web pages. Um, and that also includes web pages which are landing pages for data sets. Um, so, um, but schema.org was, was a, a it's project that's been around for best part of 10 years now, was originally established by um, Microsoft, Google, Yahoo, and Yandex, basically to bring a little order to the chaos of um, search engine optimization, but has also uh, more recently been picked up by the research community, for example, in the um, uh, the ESIP and EarthCube um, project science on schema.org, um, um, who've been making some, uh, primarily what uh, the science at schema.org people have been doing is documenting usage in the research community, but the background vocabulary of the schema.org is, um, is actually now maintained um, uh, publicly in GitHub, which also with using the issue tracker there. Uh, there are monthly releases, um, in principle, it's community owned. Um, uh, uh, anyone who's interested, who's got a GitHub account can make comments, can raise issues, can contribute to whether a particular term makes its way into the vocabulary or whether it's positioned correctly um, um, as agreed by the community. Um, but interestingly, when, it, when push comes to shove, the decisions get made by a very small group of people, um, basically with one of them, Dan Brickley, um, acting as what um, might be thought of as a benevolent dictator. He's got the community's interests at heart. I know Dan um, a bit, known him for a while, uh, well, 20, 20 odd years actually. Um, and he very much does have the community's interests at, at heart. Not, 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 even though he's employed by Google, he's not grinding any Google axes. In fact, at times he'll tell people, yes, it's all very well putting this in to the vocabulary and that's fine, but that doesn't necessarily mean Google will use it in building their index. They only they initially use a tiny fraction of schema.org um, in building the, the 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 Google index, and and Dan there sort of plays the role of just just um, bringing people's attention to um, not being overly optimistic about what's going to happen with this stuff, even while we while that vocabulary is being maintained. I mean, another vocabulary control vocabulary which I've done put quite a bit of, uh, made some contributions to recently is QDT, which is quantities, units, dimensions, and I can't remember what the T stands for, but it doesn't really matter. The interesting part of QDT, or there's two interesting parts, which is um, uh, um, lists of um, uh, units of measure and so-called quantity kinds. That's where, you know, quantity kinds are things like uh, the, the, the semantics of what a, a number refers to, like length or depth or wavelength or, or um, uh, um, those kinds of things. Um, it's uh, um, probably the most widely adopted um, controlled vocabulary of units of measure, although um, there's, a, there's another one which is just the codes called UCOM, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, which is, which is very heavily adopted in the uh, biomedical um, and clinical um, community, but QDT in terms of a, a properly fair published um, uh, controlled vocabulary is probably the most widely um, adopted. Um, it's also maintained in GitHub, um, so anyone can submit um, um, issues or suggestions or requests, and they get considered by a small group of gatekeepers. Um, I've given you the names there. Um, in consultation with a technical advisory board. So there's, there's kind of a, a supervision by the technical advisory board. Um, again, um, QDT has approximately monthly releases. There'll be you know, somewhere between one and 10 units added every month. Um, it's not quite as um, automatic as schema.org, which really does have monthly releases now. QDT is more of an as needed basis, but that work turns out to be on average about every month. Um, 
So, so, um, but again, there's a now there's a public maintenance process, and that's been going for about two years. Prior to that, it was all a bit secretive, and it was being held behind closed doors, and um, there was justifiably some suspicion about whose whose uh, uh, whose interests were being met by QDT. But now it's it's done in the public. At, at, at least, or it's just, it's transparent. Though there are these individuals who are the gatekeepers. Um, UCUM, um, as I said, is is the codes for units of measure used quite heavily in uh, the medical clinical health space. Um, that's owned by the National Libraries of Medicine. And notice on each of these points, I'm I'm making a, a point about who owns the content, who is responsible, who has got for uh, intellectually for the content of these of these controlled recoveries. And it's quite important to, to bear that in mind. Um, UCUM um, has been around for about 15, 20 years. Actually, well, it goes back originally into the 1990s, the last, the last millennium. Um, um, but um, it's been maintained publicly through, again, an online um, issue tracking system, um, but an earlier generation than GitHub, it's subversion and track. Um, the um, progress in dealing with issues there is um, a lot slower. Um, I, I've recently joined, well, the Technical Advisory Committee has recently been revived for UCOM and is dealing with some issues in the tracker which are nine and ten years old. So um, that's partly because the, um, the, the people who were maintaining it were kind of of the impression that it was all done and dusted and it didn't need any updates, although it turns out that it does. For example, it's got the, um, uh, the constants for things like Planck's constant for speed of light in there, which were, believe it or not, the values for which were updated by CoData in um, 2017, 2018. Um, so the NERC vocabulary service, which is owned by the BODC, but used broadly in the oceanography marine um, science community, um, there's uh, several hundred controlled vocabularies there, um, a lot of which are just um, uh, translations of ones which are owned and run by um, individual agencies or organizations. So, so the NVS just acts as a kind of publication platform, but some of which are directly run and owned by the BODC. Um, the actual reference content is maintained behind the scenes um, in Oracle. Um, so they also use GitHub, but only for the issue tracker. Um, effectively, Gwen, Gwen Mankwafe um, of um, BODC acts as the gatekeeper, but again, very benevolent. The gatekeeping there is really, um, is this formatted right? Is all the information there? Um, no judgment about whether the uh, terms belong in a vocabulary, because as far as um, NVS is, uh, BODC is concerned, if a term is used in a data set, then it belongs in NVS. Um, it's, uh, it's sort of bottom up um, inventory of terms used in data sets rather than instructions about thou shalt use these terms. So the, um, the governance model there has to reflect that kind of idea. Um, the yellow book, which I mentioned before, the um, Australian um, Soil and Land Survey um, Handbook, um, there um, the book is normative, the printed version, and the National Committee on Soil and Terrain, which is essentially a collaboration of the uh, Department of Environment and their operating agencies between the states and territories in Australia, um, is represented on the NCST, um, and is current. Uh, it, it's has had occasional um, um, updates in the past. The current version that was published that I showed you the picture of with, uh, I think probably here's the picture, is the third edition that was published in 2009. Um, that on average, there's kind of about every 10 years it gets updated and it's currently being revised um, by the NCST, but primarily Andrew Biggs from Queensland um, uh, Natural Resources is managing that revision. So if you've got any problems with that, you need to get hold of Andrew. Um, and I haven't really tracked down whether they've got a, a transparent uh, web presence. I think 
probably not, but it's owned by NCST. Um, so they, as long as they're happy with their process, I guess that's okay. Um, we do have, as I showed before, a linked data version of that, but that lags the official version and that's very deliberate because the official version is the version in the book. Um, finally, the geological time scale, um, as I mentioned, is owned by the International Commission on Stratigraphy. Um, the values of the, the numbers in there of the different boundaries in the chart, um, each one of those is tied to an article in, in a journal. These days, almost always a journal published by the um, ICS called Episodes. So um, you, if, once you get an article published in Episodes, which establishes one of those boundaries, then a, a, a value in the controlled vocabulary gets changed. The um, website tabulation gets updated annually, but again, that's lagging what the agreements of the Commission for Stratigraphy are. And there's the semantic implementation that I've been managing with um, Steve Richard a bit, um, which is in GitHub, but that is not the normative value. Although um, uh, ICS, I believe, I'm not sure if Nick's, Nick uh, Carr is on this call, but um, he's now the webmaster for ICS and is basically planning on shifting so that the semantic version becomes the normative version of the geological timescale at the moment, though it's only updated and I've got the energy. So um, actually I'll skip this one. Um, the point I was making here was just that some systems allow you to reflect um, uh, very fine-grained revisions um, at a, an individual term level, um, shown by the historical versions available thing, but most systems tend to hide that um, behind closed doors. Um, I'd also, as part of this slide deck, reflected on some of the ways in which governance is done in the official standards community, like ISO with its five-year review cycles and technical committees and multiple drafts and review stages. You know, similar system used by the Open Geospatial Consortium, um, although it doesn't have such hard timelines. W3C has very hard timelines, two-year timelines on a working group to produce a recommendation. Um, and you know also the different uh, ways in which these standards are published iso standards are pdfs ogc standards these days are html but prepared using uh, um, a, a particular pipeline w3c uses its own standard html and it's all done there so um sort of a summary thing um we're um uh, we, we're working on these 10 rules and we've done one for the making of the vocabulary fair and the next one we're planning on doing is maintaining a fair vocabulary which is part of the governance story and i've just given you a few precedents for how some well-known controlled vocabularies are governed at present okay thanks